This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, claims are made that a sea lion and her pup have been scared by contractors at Dunedin's Tomahawk Beach. Runners try to beat the bells in the annual race around the University of Otago clock tower. And organisers rate the family-friendly North Otago and p show a success. Tenakoto Kato Namihi o te ahiahi nei kiaora. I'm Simon Anderson. A Dunedin business is defending its actions after angry beachgoers accused it of endangering and threatening a New Zealand sea lion and its pup. Dunedin-based contractor Nash and Ross started on Friday taking sand from Tomahawk Beach for both commercial purposes and flood protection work. But members of the public claim that workers scared off a mother sea lion from her pup. Nash and Ross says it disagrees with the claims that crews scared the sea lion off the beach before work resumed. The Department of Conservation says a mother and pup, seen here in file footage from about a week earlier, are known to be residing in the area. However, the pup hasn't been spotted in recent days. Doc said on Friday it believed the missing pup was most likely hidden in the dunes while the mother was foraging at sea. Doc staff and volunteers from the New Zealand Sea Lion Trust were keeping a close eye on the beach over the weekend. Doc says it's spoken to the contractors at the beach and advised them what to do when sea lions or other species are nearby, which includes stopping work when animals are closer than 50 metres or appear distressed. In Dunedin, the South today. The opening of a cycle and walking trail between Clyde and Cromwell has been delayed for a month. The scenic track along Lake Dunstan needs blasting to complete the last 100 metre stretch of the trail and make the rock face safe. However, local police say the trail represents a risk when it comes to search, rescue and recovery operations. Police say if something happens in the middle of the Dunstan Trail, they might be 10 kilometres from the nearest road. Consequently, they are already planning the logistics of rescue access by lake and air. A record number of runners turned up this, to this year's clock tower race. Runners have to sprint around the University of Otago Registry building before the clock chimes 12. Quite a crowd of runners turned up to try and beat the bells of the university clock tower, sprinting a circuit around the registry building. First held in the 1980s, the event was brought back to life by Jared Monk three years ago, and he's seen it grow in that time. Three years ago, now to now we had what ten on or so that first year, and we had about almost 50, you know, today. Um, so it's been going strength to strength, really. So it's um, it's really cool. The overall winner was John Gerber with a time of just under 49 seconds and it was his partner Eliza Meekin who won the women's division coming in just six seconds later. We have dating as well so that's an uh, unfair team advantage. He obviously gave her the, uh, the tips of how to win. So Monk is close to finishing his studies in dentistry and admits he might not be around to keep on administrating the event in future years. At this stage, yeah, it's looking like I'll, I'll, um, I'll be passing the torch on, and so that's why uh, I'll, I've you know, been setting up a, a really good sort of portfolio and a how-to to make sure this event can, um, can run past my um, tenure here. You yeah. know? The event's prizes rely on a number of sponsors, which takes some organising, but he's hoping the people taking over won't find administrating the event too onerous. It's not too hard to organise things remotely these days, a lot of phone calls and emails, so just going to make sure someone's here on the day to, to set things up. I was down here about 8 o'clock this morning putting cones out, you know, getting cars off the, uh, off the um, causeway here and stuff like that. So. The race is inspired by the Academy Award winning British film Chariots of Fire, depicting the lead up to the 1924 Olympic Games in Paris. In Dunedin, the South today. Otago Polytechnic has postponed its graduation ceremony due to the recently changed COVID-19 alert levels. 
The graduation was to have taken place this Friday when a still in force alert level 2 would restrict gatherings to 100 people. Otago Polytechnic Chief Executive Megan Gibbons says the organisation deeply regrets having to make the decision. All pre-graduation ceremonies have also been postponed and Otago Polytechnic is looking to reschedule the graduation for June or July. From Highland dancers to livestock competitions, the North Otago a and show had it all, but it was the terrier race that many people marked as the highlight of the Uamaru event. About 20 or so little dogs gave their all chasing a lure behind a quad bike in the annual terrier race at the North Otago A&P show. Committee member Bill Kingan says the Oamaru show has always attracted good crowds, with this year about 3,000 people coming through the gate. This show is uh, as good as probably any of them. Um, and I remember back in 1983 when I was president of the association um, that it was probably a similar size. It's always been a similar size. This year, the A and P committee tried to provide a number of fun and free things for children to do to encourage more families to come along. The event includes everything from Highland dancers to equestrian events and competitions covering a variety of livestock. Appears to be good sheep numbers, really good numbers um, under the stand in the home industries, um, and the trade area has a good number of exhibitors. So, so it's really good. The North Otago A&P show is in its 158th year, making it the second oldest A&P in New Zealand. In Oamaru, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, an historic part of a former factory is deemed earthquake risk, and riders are ready for the annual cavalcade across central Otago. Ka kite risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz a poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. The New Zealand Symphony Orchestra has postponed its scheduled Dunedin concerts originally planned for early March. 
This is due to the chance of COVID-19 alert level two. The orchestra is hoping to reschedule for the, con the concerts for later this year. The performances were to feature a pair of world-renowned Dunedin-trained singers Simon O'Neill and Annalise. They were to present highlights from Bizet, Beethoven, Mozart and Verdi. The historic Cadbury Dairy and Machine House building in Dunedin has been identified as an earthquake risk. Retaining the building was a requirement of the consent to demolish much of the block on which it resides to make way for Dunedin's new hospital. At the time, there were plans for the building, which was spruced up to become a Cadbury gift shop. However, it meets less than a third of new building earthquake standards, and getting it up to even two-thirds of standard could require significant structural improvements. Horse and wagon riders have set off again this week for another Goldfields cavalcade. Among the trekkers is a 74-year-old woman from Kura who is travelling the trails for the 25th time. After more than 20 years of trekking through the Otago mountainside, Tyree Hall will head off today on the Tussock Creek Light Harness Trail, starting her 25th cavalcade journey. The Kura woman will ride the trail with her new horse Sandy after husband Neil McCarricka pinched her horse Cooper for this year's trail. Light harness. <laughs> we're on the Light Harness um, Tussock Creek Trail and we're leaving from Round Hill Station up the hill, going over to Hunter Hills, to Wairua, to Invercroy, and then over the Halden Pass to um, Grace Hills and then on into, uh, then on into um, Twizel. Horse says the cavalcade evokes numerous memories for her, from driving four Tennessee horses, possums on toilet seats, and the Omaru Scouts group catering. And though things have changed through the years, and they were no longer roughing it, she says taking part in her 25th cavalcade was still something very special. This is Copper. <laughs> oh, he's bored. <laughs> this, is, this is Copper. He now, my husband rides Copper. Um, I bought him uh, just over a year ago. He's an Arab cross and he's, oh, that's awful. <laughs> Yawning. Um, and he's just lovely. He's just an mm. awesome little horse. And this is Sandy. And I've just got her about six weeks ago. And she's a wee quarter horse cross. And um, so she's going to be my ride for the. Organisers are expecting about 640 people to take part in this year's ride, using different country trails which all converge in Twizel next weekend. In the Mackenzie country, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, Christchurch airport reps touched down in Taras for further discussions and we check out the early week's weather. Ha koko akinei. Inside are all sorts of innovations from all over China. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome to Alex Campbell Menswear. Our three stores have no shortage of stock. Check these out. We've got the Dunedin Print T-shirts. Check out our zillions of short sleeve shirts. These are, these are crackers. They iron themselves in the wash. Iron cheetah they're called. And there's some really cool polo shirts. Look at all the bright colours. And of course there's no shortage of shorts. This is always one of our brightest colours. Our long sleeve fashion shirts. Jeans, casual trousers, dress trousers, you name it. We have you covered. Alex Campbell Menswear. It fits. So if you're shopping for your family or yourself, come and see Alex Campbell Menswear Stores. We're full of stock. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals.
Namaino, welcome back. Christchurch International Airport is holding drop-in sessions in Taras next week to explain its new international airport. The township of Taras was surprised last year when $45 million of farmland was bought in the area with the intent to build a jet-capable runway. The drop-in sessions at the Taras Community Hall are set for this Wednesday and Thursday afternoons and evenings. The aim is for people to get another chance to meet the airport's representatives to add feedback, ask questions and get a better understanding of the project's next steps. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Claims were made at a sea, that a sea lion and her pup have been scared by contractors at Dunedin's Tomahawk Beach. Runners tried to beat the bells in the annual race around the University of Otago clock tower. And organisers rated the family-friendly North Otago a and show a success. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we have Hayden Meikle with us this evening. Kia ora, Hayden. Good evening, Simon. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Good, very good. And breaking news, it's quite cool to say that, and breaking news, we've just found out the... Uh, First people in Dunedin got their COVID vaccination today. Oh, really? We've been hammering the uh, STHB for information, and today it's actually came through. They've yeah. already they've jabbed, I think, a couple of hundred people, port workers mainly, of course. Mm. Um, we don't have any managed or isolation quarantine facilities down here, but the first bunch of people in Dunedin have had their vaccination. So how exciting is, uh, is right. that? So uh, we'll have all that, all the latest on that, and I think they've sent us a couple of photos of the, of the people getting their jabs. So a whole lot more to come over the coming months. Uh, what else has we got tomorrow? So our, our lead story we think is about Forbury Park, the future of Forbury Park. Mm -hmm. So obviously confirmed in recent days it's, it's finished as, yeah. a, as a race course uh, and everybody's thoughts now immediately turn to, well, okay, what's going to happen to that rather large plot of land out there in South Dunedin? Sure. And uh, we've talked to a, a developer and a couple of others who indeed say, look, you could probably fit 300 houses mm -hmm. on that area. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the middle of a housing crisis in the city. We've got far too many people trying to get houses and not enough houses. Um, it's a flood prone area, it's got climate change implications, yeah. so we're looking at all of those things addressing how they could get around that. So I think there'll be huge interest in, 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 in that story. For sure. uh, another interesting story is uh, from the SDHB, they're trying to clear a bit of bed block, um, the waiting lists at Dunedin Hospital, yeah. and one of the solutions they're looking at is uh, sending orthopaedic patients to Timaru Hospital. Um, all right. Now, you know, generally being sent to Timaru is almost punishment rather than a reward, but in this case, it seems like a really smart way. The hospital is working nicely together. I think Dunedin might send a doctor or two as well. Yeah. Timaru provides the beds and, and we clear that wait list at Dunedin Hospital, which, right. is, which is important. Uh, and the Highlanders. Now, obviously, those who watched the rugby on Friday night would have uh, noticed a couple of things. One, the Crusaders cheat, as, as per usual, Simon. Uh, but two, the haka. Um, fascinating, really. Yeah. And uh, we've finally got a sort of full explanation from the Highlanders who kept it extremely quiet. They didn't even tell sort of photographers there was something pretty special coming. Uh, so Steve Hepburn has looked into it today and got them to explain how it came about, what the haka means, uh, and crucially, I guess, a lot of people wondering how often are they going to perform it. They've sort know. of indicated it won't be every game. Mm. Um, interesting. I don't know how I how I feel about it. I'm used to seeing the haka with the All Blacks and First Fifteen rugby. It's a bit, but different seeing the Highlanders doing it. But yeah. be good to see the story behind it and why they are, why they wanted to do it. So, all that and heaps more, Simon. It's going great. to be a good paper. It sounds like a great read. Thank you. Time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Map. Looking at the situation, northerly airflow increases tomorrow and early Wednesday as a low pressure system moves across the Tasman Sea. That pivots to a southwest airflow from Wednesday night, bringing colder temperatures for the rest of the week. It's quite mild and wet as we travel across the north of the island, 19 degrees on the western side for Westport and Greymouth.
Moving northeastwards, it's similar in Nelson with rain in 20 degrees, lighter showers for Blenheim on 22. And just partial cloud in Canterbury, some sun peeking through. It gets warmer the lower we go, 22 for Kaikoura, 23 for Christchurch and 26 degrees in Ashburton. Moving to the southern towns which pick up that northern airflow, moderate northerlies, high cloud and 23 degrees for Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore, a bit cloudier and cooler in the Catlins on 21 degrees. In central, Queenstown, Wanaka and Alexandra experience moderate northwesterlies and increasing cloud reaching 24 or 25 degrees. Showers potentially greeting Queenstown later in the day. Just 19 in Tiano though, with rain and moderate northerly winds. The northern towns all experience some kind of northern airflow too. Moderate northwesterlies, cloud increasing and 25 degrees for Twizel and Omarama. A northeasterly blows through Oamaru amidst some cloud and 22 degrees, and Timaru reaches 26 in spite of a moderate northerly and high cloud. In Dunedin, a moderate northeasterly brushes through the town tonight and tomorrow, loosening tonight's clouds to provide some sunny periods tomorrow afternoon before increasing again during the evening. A mild 14 tonight as well as 22 and 15 tomorrow. It's mostly fine on Wednesday, though thick, high cloud prevails. Those northern winds continue before turning colder southwesterly mid-evening, bringing some rain. A high of 25 and a low of 11. And moving down to Invercargill, it's mainly fine tonight and tomorrow, just some high cloud and freshening northerly winds as the days progress. Lows of 14 both evenings, bookends 22 degrees tomorrow afternoon. But it's cloudy, rainy and windy on Wednesday. Northerly winds at first change to cooler southwesterlies later on, a high of 19 and a low of 11 degrees. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Nō reira ki a pai te pō, ka kita anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.